Well, let's do this. This is pretty funny. Um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's happened last uh, week now that uh, Hillary Clinton gave her alt-right speech. Talked where, about it on Monday. Where she um, called out, well, basically the reality of, of the Trump campaign. Now, in my mind, this is not the alt- alt-right. It's the right. And the only thing that is even remotely altish about it is that it's really just not Rush Limbaugh, right? I mean, by alt-right, what we mean is just newer media players who have basically taken Limbaugh's template and are presenting it in a different format or medium. But to have a politician and a presidential candidate express it in this way and to express what we've been saying for a long time, what a lot of people have been saying is that Donald Trump is not using the, the dog whistles anymore. The message is, is more or less the same. It's just that now it's explicit. He is now delivering the subtext, not the text. And this drove some of the more rightist versions of the five crazy. And I would say, I also think there's an undercurrent of... What do we do now that Roger Ailes isn't here? <laughs> Listen uh, to this. Who, and it's uh, Dana Perino sides with Juan Williams. And it's what's his face? Not douchey. It's Kilmeade who's just steaming inside. And that's where I think you can look the look on Kilmeade's face here. You could just hear his silence, too. It is it's saying like, shit, what am I going to do now that Ailes is gone? Here we go. And very well. 35, that's all Americans. So, so she's not, this is not something that was invented as a political well, I mean, stunt. Do, do you think that if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for the outright seven day, eight day push, nine day push by uh, Donald Trump to say to the black community, I want your vote and, and fill in the blanks after that, that she'd be making that speech? Pause it. Hispanic that, community. That, that, Pause it. I want to respond to just the idea that Hillary Clinton was concerned about Donald Trump's so-called seven or eight day outreach for the African-American vote that Brian Kilmeade uh, raises as a reason for Clinton to deliver this message. <laughs> All right, rewind. <laughs> seven day, eight day push, nine day push by uh, Donald Trump to say to the black community, I want your vote and, and fill in the blanks after that, that she'd be making that speech? And yeah. the Hispanic that, community that wasn't it. today? That wasn't but it. She Let was me supposed just tell you. to talk about small business. Doesn't if matter. he Look, wasn't making inroads, me, if he wasn't making, he's she not thought making, she won already. He is and not now making, she was forced out of a case. Ryan, I don't know what poll herself. you may have seen, but she is not making any inroads <laughs> with black voters or, or I mean, he's not making any inroads with black voters specifically or Latino. Nothing. I actually think yeah. that, Brian, I actually think that the promotion of Steve Bannon, who was running Breitbart News, to campaign CEO was the motivation for her to give the, the speech, not that there was a concer concern for her in the polls. Oh, and ahead. that happened go earlier this week. Can I just have a quick question? I was oh, he's, he just got shot down <laughs> by a woman. And he, he is just, he is just, fact. but no, but I mean, he, you, you can see it's like, God damn it. We're in the post ales here around here. <laughs> Incidentally, uh, Brian hadn't yet to see any of the polls after this huge, massive seven or eight or possibly even nine day outreach in asking black people for their vote. Can you imagine? He spent almost nine days asking black people for their vote, et cetera, et cetera, as Brian Kilmeade said. And shockingly, the only thing that happened is that Donald Trump now has statistically 0% support <laughs> nationally from black people. 0%. I'm not, that's not hyperbole. That is just stating what the polls show. Now, let's unskew that for a moment. Let's unskew that poll. And you come out with, he might have 2% support nationally. Big might. Big might. Big, big might. Big might. That's a big unskewer I've brought there. Yeah, you've... 
Ooh. I totally unskewed that. To be really fair to Brian Kilmeade, though. He's, he's really is, dumb. Yeah, he's one of the dumbest people on the face of the earth, and he might not even know that Roger Ailes isn't there anymore. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do think that you have to give him, like, you know, it's like golf. You give him a certain handicap. I mean, just like, he should just get credit for being able to find the studio every day. Basically. How long does it take for a goldfish to notice the owner's, like, gone? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, he's, still, he's still getting some crumbs in his tank. He's like, Ailes are still here. Checks are still here. Hey, why are there less women cowering in the hallways? What's going on? Anyways, let's go talk about Trump. Hello, you. I'm Sam Cedar. Looking for smart, progressive talk that is occasionally amusing? Well, subscribe to our YouTube feed. Subscribe to our podcast. Like us on Facebook. And just generally enjoy us.